Thanks for joining us. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels dedicated to keeping health IT staff current and engaged. Welcome to our briefing campaign on modernizing the healthcare data platform with CDW Healthcare's leaders in this space, Lee Pierce and Rex Washburn. Today is episode five, a step-by-step -step methodology for creating a successful healthcare data governance framework. This podcast series is going to culminate with an excellent webinar panel discussion with experts talking about how to modernize your healthcare data platform, the right fit for every unique health system. That's going to be on Wednesday, December 7th. Check out thisweekhealth.com slash webinars and click on the link to go ahead and register. We want to thank our sponsors, Sirius and CDW, for making this content possible. Now, on to the show. So this should be a fun one. Data governance, I've said many times on the show, was one of the hardest projects I ever had to do as a CIO. Now, hopefully this has gotten a little bit easier and better and uh, we're going to talk to Rex and Lee and bring this home. What does a healthcare data governance framework look like for healthcare? So maybe I'll start just with across industries, the way that we define and approach um, data governance. I agree that this is a challenging topic, but it's more important than ever that an organization can approach data governance as an enterprise capability. First of all, when we talk about data governance, we like to talk, it's it's really people, process, and technology. There's as much people and process in data governance as there is probably more than there is about the technology. And that's that's critical. Our definition of data governance, really, it's a it's about decision rights and accountabilities. That's the people and process part of this. It's a program. It's not a project. So it's a program of decision rights and accountabilities to treat data as an asset. And then there are three areas that we talk about in this definition. It includes managing, leveraging, and protecting data accordingly. And so that's really the definition. You can see it's decision rights and accountabilities to treat data as an asset. So you know who's going to do what with the data to treat it as an asset as well as what needs to be done in order to not just protect it. You're not taking a view of governance being just saying, no, you cannot have access to this data. It's just as much about leveraging the data for the outcomes like we've talked about in previous podcasts. The framework, as you take the next steps though, beyond the definition, the framework really includes seven areas of data governance or seven pillars of data governance. The first that we talk about is data stewardship. The second is data quality. Third is metadata management. Fourth is master and reference data management. Fifth, data security. Sixth, data privacy. And the seventh is information lifecycle governance. Those seven pillars of data governance really become the framework around the application of principles that will support each, each of these areas and pillars support each other in being able to treat data appropriately as an asset. So that's the definition and framework that we usually start with, regardless of industry. Rex, I'm going to come to you. You, you talked in one of the previous episodes about the core clean data set. And you were saying just, just having something as sort of a reference data set that you can bring things in and create those views around. And I want to, I want to use that as the example to say, okay, that sounds pretty complex to do within my organization. Do I really need data governance? What's going to happen if I don't have a good data governance program in place? Absolute Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't have a modern data platform or data fabric or data mesh without data governance. So that, that's one of the things that's really changed within the data landscape that I've seen. The most significant change is we've all come together and said data governance is core DNA for data, right? And it's not just when we look at all the pillars, not just looking forward as great, we have we have a catalog. So now we have a way for stewards to work with the metadata. We can start really seeing what we have. 
we have to look backwards because all the healthcare organizations have been doing something to try to solve this problem to date. So that could be, I have a desktop BI tool that, that I've been producing dashboards with. Where does that data sit on shared drives, on laptops, things like that? So that whole information lifecycle management, data security, those kinds of things, we have to sort of look backwards to what we have done while we sort of charge forward. But when I'm just looking at the simplest thing, prior episode, you'd mentioned a dashboard, right? For clinicians, there is no modern data unless the people using that dashboard trust it. I also don't have to boil the ocean to get started with this. I can start with when we think of the quadruple aim, right? What's going to drive the most value there? If maybe that's some data for a dashboard. I can look at that as a data product, which is something else that's sort of changed. Instead of we must build the, all the marts or the monolithic warehouse, you know, what data do I need to provide this value? Let's build a data product, iterate rapidly over that, focus on quality and completeness of the data. I can then look at what the what the data is feeding into that and then start addressing the specific data quality issues, data data security issues in there. But ultimately, if you don't have governance, you don't have modern data. Armageddon. I, 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 I like <laughs> you, you didn't leave uh, any wiggle room there. So people no. have to understand that this is this is pretty, pretty data, important. Data Armageddon. <laughs> well, and, and it comes back to that foundation of trust, right? Yeah. So when you're looking at that data, you have to know you can trust it. And we get this all the time, or I used to get this all the time when you go in front of physicians, like, where'd you get that number? And you have to be able to step back and say, this is where we got this number. Here's what, and then you have to be able to say, well, which definition of admission uh, are you using? And that, cause right. so you, you do have to, you do have to be able to, to tell that story in yeah. order to build the foundation for trust. And the foundation for trust is, is everything, especially in a clinical s setting. I want to talk yeah. about stewards for a minute, not to, I mean, look, you, you laid out a lot of pillars. We could talk about this topic for the next. 45 minutes yes, we could <laughs> and we're going to talk about it for probably another seven or eight minutes and uh, at the end I'll, I'll ask you to maybe we can find a resource that they can hit to get that model that you uh, that you talked about i think yeah. would be be helpful but i want to talk about stewards for a minute because one of the things you talked about a program this is a program it's a it's, it's an organizational decision that we are going to use data as an asset and we're going to build a foundation of trust on that, on that data. And you really do have to get stewards from all over the organization, don't you? Right. Correct. Absolutely. So the stewards are assigned. You have to organize yourself in a way that allows you to assign stewards to an appropriate set of data. And typically we talk about that as a data domain. Many times those data domains are defined and are aligned with how the organization is structured from a clinical and operational perspective. But it has to touch all of those. And it has to touch, you have to have stewards also for the data that is shared across all of those different departments and domains. And that's where master data comes in. I, we like to talk about data governance as a team sport. And that's where the people on the team is defined is by focusing on data stewardship and really what their accountability is and helping them realize the critical role that they play on the team as you think about treating data as an asset, the role that they individually play related to their data domain that they play to make sure it's clean, make sure it's well understood and documented and trusted because there's no one size fits all. It takes, it takes that, that team effort, subject area by subject area, data domain by data domain to be able to manage it and apply data governance principles to be successful. I think one of the way I look at it is the stewards have become the chief trust officer for that data domain that they're stewarding, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when I say, Bill, you'd said, well, how do I trust that number? Where that number come from? I can go to a steward and they can leverage their catalog platform and look at the entire lineage, everything that's happened from the data, the number that's displayed all the way back to the source systems and the transformations that 
have been done to it, right? And then explain what definitions were used. Where did we come from? Even if you have two numbers that are utilized slightly differently with the same same name in two different domains, I mean, they can differentiate that. Yeah. So they become a critical element for it. And it's it's not an IT thing. It is that team sport because IT is the support, the enablement. They're, they're part of it. But if data governance sits in IT, it's not a complete data governance program. Yeah. So who, who chairs the data governance program? In our organization, when we kicked it off, it was, well, first of all, because we were bringing it to them of, hey, we need to do data governance. They said, great. Yeah. Go do it. <laughs> Go do it. And so I, I grabbed the chief strategy officer. So the two of us really set up the, the foundation for it. And we quickly realized that we needed a clinician to be a part of that leadership team as well. And I, I, I tried every which way to step out of it at that point, because clinical data is a significant part of the data and strategy was a significant part of the data. And I thought, but they, they needed a lot of guidance. What, what generally works? Who <clears throat> leads this initiative? Yeah. Well, coming back to the team sport aspect of it, y yes, you need to identify, I guess, you using that analogy, you need to identify a coach and a leader, somebody that's going to be able to organize the potential data chaos that exists, needs to bring order to it and make sure that everybody is playing from the same playbook and understands the playbook. <clears throat> in, the, in the end, it's not that the IT teams and the technology teams step out of it and are not involved. Part of the team sport aspect is you have to have technical expertise and you actually have technical data stewards by data domain. And then you have your business and clinical, depending on the data domain, you have to have their expertise and knowledge. And it's the combination of that technical and business and or clinical knowledge because really to understand the data, you have to be able to understand clinical processes that even generated that data, let alone the underlying systems that that data is stored in. So to answer your question about who, who leads it, I have seen successful data governance programs led by various members of that, of that team. But ultimately, Typically, what we see is you have an executive leadership team and that you have either a clinical or strategic leader, similar to what you saw, teamed up with either the chief data officer, chief analytics officer, or CIO even at that executive team level. The next level down, though, they, they're kind of a dyad almost of leading those the data governance efforts. But then you go down to the next level of the detailed work that needs to be done. Again, you need that dyad of technical with business and clinical leader leadership just to be that the coach and the assistant coach to be able to help all of the army of data stewards and team members be able to effectively deliver on the various aspects of data governance. All right. Gentlemen, I want to thank you for five wonderful episodes. I really appreciate we're going to close this out with a webinar and I'm looking forward to catching up with you there as well. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, thank Bill. you so much. What a great discussion. I want to thank our sponsors for today, Sirius and CDW for investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. Don't forget that this whole series ends with a great webinar on Wednesday, December 7th. Lee Pierce and Rex Washburn will be joining us along with Jared Nunez, Executive Director, Informatics and Analytics at Memorial Care. We're going to take this discussion one step further by including you and your questions. So go ahead and register at thisweekhealth.com. The link is in the top right-hand corner. And don't forget to drop your questions in the form so we can make sure to cover it in the webinar. Looking forward to that discussion. Thanks for listening. That's all for now.